everybody, I'm Laura Trump coming to you from my home in New York. With an economy to restore, justice to deliver, and violence in the streets, the Democrat-controlled Congress stood idly by. Joining me is the United States Representative from the 1st District of the great state of New York, Lee Zeldin. Lee, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, with the peace and security of our country at stake, it's sort of shocking, but how is it that the Democrat-controlled Congress could stand idly by and not support solutions for the American people? I think a lot of people want answers here. Yeah, I would like an answer as well. You know, it's interesting. Basically, they got their gavels in 2018, this last election, by pledging to an enraged activist base that they would resist, oppose, impeach, and obstruct everything and anything. And to fulfill that pledge, that promise, uh, they have been following through by obstructing, resisting, impeaching, and opposing everything and anything. And I believe that the average American wants to see people in government and Congress working with each other uh, to try to find common ground and move our country forward. Uh, but unfortunately, this payoff to that base from 2018 and fear of their next congressional primary that might be uh, in the weeks or months ahead here in 2020 or the November election, it's clouded their mind. I've, I've I heard people talk about the atrophy of bipartisan muscles. Uh, there are some people who are in leadership positions in the House, like Speaker Pelosi, who doesn't seem to have a bipartisan muscle left to, to flex. And last point I'll tell you is this, uh, between Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, and Jim Clyburn, the top three House Democrats, they have now been in the House of Representatives for 100 years. Wow. That'll be another reason. Oof. Well, it's really disappointing, I think, to a lot of Americans because one would think, or we would like to think, that people could put politics aside and always consider what's best for the American people. But of course, in this case, we see uh, people aren't able to do that. Um, and we find ourselves obviously in a very difficult time, I think, in our country, a time when really we should all come together. We should all want to support the peaceful protesters who are out there. We should uh, want to make sure that our communities across the country are safe. But with Democrats, including Biden campaign staff members, posting bail for violent protesters, people who have been locked up for burning down buildings, for looting, for causing all different types of crime and chaos all across this country. I mean, whose side, Lee, are these people on anyway? I don't think I, a lot of people don't understand. Why would they do this? Why post bail for these people? Well, for one, they, they aren't law and order elected officials. They aren't law and order candidates. Uh, you don't hear them talk about our rule of law. Uh, you don't see them speaking out to send strong, effective messages, consistent messages to the people who are rioting, who are looting, who are burning, who are physically attacking others. While our entire country is united for justice for George Floyd and his family, now because of these actions of these rioters, we're also calling for justice for David Dorn and right. all of these other current and former law enforcement officers who have been killed trying to protect their communities. And I think that if, if you're one of these Democrats uh, who really need to do some self-reflection, who haven't been sending that strong, effective message, think about the dreams that have been crushed by the actions of these rioters, the livelihoods and the lives over the course of the last several days. And to just sit back and, and let that continue the destruction is a total lack of leadership. We're seeing it here in New York where they still haven't called in the National Guard. It was happening again uh, over the course of the, the, the last night, the last two nights, the last three nights, uh, where these businesses are being looted, burned, cops are being attacked, many are being hurt, uh, and they're not gonna call in the National Guard. And in, on, top of New York, on top of all that New York, they just imposed cashless bail. So as a law, if you do any of these crimes that we have been witnessing, folks can go straight back out onto the street without any consequences. They don't even need Justin Timberlake to bail them out. Yeah, <laughs> truly unbelievable. Um, I think you're right. A lot of these people need a lot of self-reflection um, very quickly, let's hope. And you just mentioned it. New York, where I live as well, has been particularly hard hit by not only the pandemic, which I think 
people may, maybe coronavirus, the people are over it now. It almost feels like that was 50 years ago. We were hard hit by the pandemic and now these violent protests as well. How do we get our communities back on track, Lee? I mean, this has been, it's been a very tough time, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, you're seeing an eroding of public safety. The laws that are being implemented in Albany and in City Hall are laws that are actually making things worse, not better. Uh, this past December, we had uh, anti-Semitism all over New York City and the surrounding areas, violent anti-Semitic attacks. Uh, and whether it was th those violent attacks or it was going to rob a bank, people walking out the door after getting arrested with a big smile on their face, they couldn't believe that they're back on the street and then going out and robbing banks again. So the trend of what we're seeing of the people who are in power right now, in many cases, it's been worse than silent. They actually are speaking up to, to encourage it. Uh, and you could, you could see from their rhetoric uh, that they are concerned about their left flank for, for primaries. It's about their, self, their selfish pursuit of power uh, and they're, they're refusing to lead. Uh, my background is the military. And, and you look up to those senior officers, those command sergeant majors, those sergeants who are leading young men and women into, into combat, you look for uh, consistency and a will, a, a, a sense of purpose, and they give orders. Uh, and you find that right balance that's right for the military. Being in government's not the same thing. But what we are actually seeing is totally the opposite, where there are just they're, they're total erosion of public safety. And I'm concerned for uh, the, these communities that we love, those small business owners, those individuals, those families who are having everything destroyed. And that's why this November we need to reelect President Trump. We need to give him a Senate and a House to work with him, a Republican majority not pledging to impeach, resist, impose, and obstruct, but saying let's work together to impose a, a rule of law, a, a safe country for security. Uh, the contrast is becoming clear, and it really is the fault of those leaders on the other side for allowing this moment to happen the way it is. Yeah, I think you're, you make a great point. I mean, we need to take a look at just how these communities, a lot of these cities have been run. They've all been run by Democrats who are refusing to enact the law. They're refusing to uphold the law. They're refusing to, re refusing to arrest people who have committed these crimes. It's, it's shocking that it happens, but it's all the more reason that people need to take every election very, very seriously. And whether we're talking about electing a president or as you're saying, uh, Congress, or even looking at, uh, you know, where I live in New York City, I mean, it's very important to make sure that your elected officials are going to be there when you need them and they are going to do the right things for your community. I wonder, Lee, if, if New York City will ever be the same. I see so many people leaving. I have personal friends who have left who say they will probably never move back to New York. I just wonder, is it ever going to be the same? Will we ever fully recover from this? I hope the answer is yes, uh, but we need real leadership there. And uh, Listen, it's, it's a different time. It's a scary time. But uh, I think the one thing that we all know, we're all Americans. We always overcome. We always rise to the occasion. And uh, this will be no different, I'm sure. So uh, any final words you'd like to leave people with? Any, anything uh, inspirational, perhaps, in a, in a time like this? Yeah, the, we, the resiliency and the resolve that we have while people are leaving New York, as you pointed out every day, what's amazing is if you change the leadership of New York City today, and if you just, you had someone who respected uh, our police officers, who stood with the police officers, called in the National Guard, who had to converse with people on both sides of, of these uh, really complex issues, the fact that our city, and just using this as one example, could rebound within 24 hours, it really shows you just how important it is that this November that we're voting the right people in the office to represent us uh, everywhere in America, whoever is watching this. Uh, I think that our spirit is, uh, is very strong. Uh, and it's one that, you know, we live in the greatest country in the world. We want our country to be the greatest version of itself. We're up against people who want our country to be like some other country somewhere else in the world. And for us, that American dream and that American spirit is one where we're not going to take anything for granted between now and this November uh, and the days, months and years that follow, because we know that our great country can be even more exceptional going forward.
That's right. All right, Congressman Lee Zeldin, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. As Democrats in Congress sat on the sidelines, President Trump was delivering solutions for peace and security. That's the real news for today. If you'd like to get involved with Team Trump, go to DonaldJTrump.com or download the official Trump 2020 app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. I'm Laura Trump coming to you from my home in New York. Thanks for joining us, everybody.